The FBI found another way in, $225 in parts, and you can steal all the cars. Oh, and Yahoo, killing more passwords. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for March 23rd, 2016, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. And thank you to everyone that supports us on patreon.com slash threatwire. Pretty big update on the Apple versus FBI situation. Quote, on Sunday, March 20th, 2016, an outside party demonstrated to the FBI a possible method for unlocking Farouk's iPhone. I'm quoting the DOJ here. Testing is required to determine whether it is a viable method that will not compromise data on Farouk's iPhone. If the method is viable, it should eliminate the need for the assistance from Apple Inc., a.k.a. Apple, set forth in the All Writs Act order in this case. Wow, does that mean the FBI Apple thing is done? No, it means there's a timeout going on here. Basically, what I just read to you is what the DOJ said when they file a motion to vacate a hearing in their ongoing battle to get Apple to give them a tool to crack the San Bernardino killer's iPhone. I have no belief that the FBI is going to continue to pursue their ability to get anything they want under the All Writs Act. However, they are pretty certain that they have a possible way to get into the iPhone that won't require Apple to rewrite the code. Now, if you want to get your hardware hacking on to the nth degree, read Jonathan Zadarsky's blog entry, My Take on the FBI's Alternative Method. It's a really interesting read. First, it walks through seven options Zadarsky deems unlikely for accessing the information on the phone, then goes deep into possible ways of copying the NAND storage off the device so it can be reloaded to brute force the pin. It is an interesting look and gets into some of the possibilities of what's going on uh, from the security standpoint and uh, well you know what go to the link in the show notes if you're curious it's a good read and it's amazing to start looking at the myriad ways an organization like the FBI can use uh, security professionals to get what they want we've been hearing stories for a while about cars with <coughs> secure remote locking and ignition systems getting unlocked without access to the factory keys. We've gotten emails from friends that uh, heard about it at DEF CON. The New York Times' Nick Belton wrote about some very personal experiences with his prize getting broken into that led him to keeping his keys in his freezer when he was at home. The freezer trick, by the way, apparently worked. What's going on? A radio amplification attack essentially pings your key, makes a signal from the key so loud the car thinks the keys are right there in the car. Now the ADAC, a German automobile club, has verified it in a big way. Wired writes that the ADAC researchers say that 24 different vehicles from 19 different manufacturers were all vulnerable, allowing them to not only reliably unlock the target vehicles, but also immediately drive them away. Al, at a distance of several hundred meters. Bigger Al, how much would a magic car stealing kit set you back? <laughs> the ADAC research has said about $225 in parts. Check Wired to see if your car is on the list and don't assume your American car is safe because it isn't on that list. US cars use different frequencies that the ADAC researchers didn't test. In the meantime, time to start looking for that RF bag you bought for your passport or start uh, tucking your keys in the freezer first thing when you get home. People trust video more than photographs, right? It's harder to fake video without tons of expensive equipment, and pretty much anybody with Photoshop can manipulate any image with a lot less, well, talent, experience, technique. That makes the stuff described by Stanford's Matthias Niesner's face-to-face, real-time face capture and reenactment of RGB videos particularly interesting. The summary is a tad dry. Quote, we present a novel approach for real-time facial reenactment of a monocular target video sequence, e.g. YouTube video. Our goal is to animate the facial expressions of the target video by a source actor and re-render the manipulated output video in a photorealistic fashion. Okay, let's unpack that. Essentially, they're mapping facial expressions from their actor on top of close-ups of George Bush, Vladimir Putin, Donald Trump, or President Obama, which means they can make some very, very interesting changes to how a person on camera reacts or responds, complete emotional reaction changes, or I would imagine, speaks. Now, we'll have a link to the show notes to the YouTube video. Uh, the team says they're using a commodity, aka cheap over-the-counter video camera, which can take spectacularly good video. I personally suspect the rendering, the stuff that happens on the backside, is pretty intense. Now, if they can tie this into modifying the audio in real time and then turn it into a product or just release the code, with a little bit of work, you can get any politician, newscaster, or YouTube star saying anything, which 
well, color me scared. That could get ugly. Can't remember a password? Passwords got stolen and folks accessed accounts? Well, neither of those is particularly unusual these days, which is part of why Yahoo started offering account key for Yahoo Mail users last year. Essentially, where a password would go in the login process, Yahoo sends a push notification to your smartphone asking if you're trying to sign in. If it's not you, you say no. Essentially, it's two-factor authentication, like Google's verification, without typing your password first, which kind of makes it one factor authentication, except there's two people involved because it's you and their servers. In any case, Security Week reports that Yahoo has added Yahoo Finance, Fantasy, Mail, Messenger, and Sports uh, to both uh, iOS and Android in their goal to keep killing the password, because Yahoo's frustrated with people breaking into people's accounts. Now, I know what you're thinking. If you lose your phone, turns out you can go to a computer, uh, the Yahoo sign-in page, and answer the questions that appear on the screen. Now, I just hope those answers are secure. But dying passwords, I'm okay with that. A big thank you from Shannon, Darren, and I to everyone who supports the show on patreon.com slash threatwire. You make it possible for us to do this show every week ad-free. Become a patron, and we may even feature your adorable fur babies like these ones in the next episode, which would be right over here. <laughs> and by the way, if you donate more, if more of you donate, if we get to our next goal, we'll add additional episodes each and every week. If you can't donate, a like, a share, or a subscribe goes quite a long way too. You can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the internet. Purr into the mic. Na 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 na